All right guys, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be talking about doing our second bond beam um, and the details that we're gonna be doing uh, with our grout stop and helping our grout um, that we fill in with our bond beam from not falling through all of our courses. So all those details we're gonna be talking about today. So what we have done since our last bond beam is we have come up three courses. So all three of these courses are hollow. This top one right here, this is going to be our bond beam in here. Um, so what we're doing is we have our cornerstones here. They're the flat faced ones um, because we need to come against here with a board eventually when we go to do our framing. So that's why that detail looks like that. We still have our rebar in here. Now our rebar that we have in the back, um, we came up. So this will be our second step. So it's gonna come back and we're gonna step here. So it's gonna look exactly like this core, um, but it'll be right here. So this will be our second step. So that's why it's a little bit shorter. And then we come back to here, this is gonna be our final elevation. So what we're going to do now is we need to fill this core without filling all three of these. We just wanna fill the top one. So what we're going to do that is we're going to use a product called Grout Stop. This right here is Grout Stop. It has quarter inch squares and it's plastic. We went with plastic. We didn't want metal um, because we didn't want any rusting going on um, when we put down our mud and so forth. So we opted for the plastic. Um, now this stuff, um, I got the eight inch. However, I wish I would have got the six because it is literally eight inches and it kind of overlaps a little bit on the block. We don't want that because remember, we're striking these off and these are gonna be sticking out. So what we're having to do is trim um, about an inch and a half, almost two inches off of this stuff. So for an eight inch block, I probably should have got six inch. Um, but anyway, what we're doing is we are laying this down on this course right here. So when we are putting our bond beam blocks on here, this grout stop is in between here. So when we go to fill these cores, the grouts or the cement, whatever we fill it with, stops right here. This mesh is going to catch it. Um, so when we do fill this, we're gonna make sure that we don't do it very wet um, to have it sink down in through here. And we're gonna be very careful when we vibe. Um, we do want the concrete to get around the rebar, but we don't want all of that cream going down through our mesh. This is gonna help stop it but if we just stick our vibe in there and just vibe the living crap out of it, we're gonna sink all that cream down and it's gonna pass through our mesh. So it's gonna be a little bit of playing there to get that perfect um, uh, cement around there, um, but not have it go through. So that's what we're doing here. We have a little bit um, course back here to lay down. Um, and then we're gonna come back through here and start our last course um, for this bond beam right here. Um, I'll take you guys around and show you what we did with our rebar to tie it in. Okay, so right here you can see we have a little bit of um, regular block. Um, this is what I'm just calling regular block, the block that we're just laying here. Um, here's our corner piece. Um, we're going to be able to cut these sections out um, and then lay our rebar in here. Um, so our rebar, all we have is we have it tied in here with um, wire ties and um, just metal uh, wire tie. And we have it overlapped really well with this one, probably almost two feet. I mean, you don't have to go that crazy with it. Um, it's just kind of how it worked out for cutting some of these. Um, but we tied it in three places, at the top, the middle, and the bottom close to here. Um, I wish we would have done that with all of them. However, we did tie some of these um, when they were out, uh, when we had this top course up. Unlike that one, we could get down really far. So you can see in here, um, down in there, we don't have it tied down at the very bottom. Um, we have it one, two, three up here. So I wish we could get down here. It's nearly impossible with, um, with the pliers and stuff, getting it around there. So we did the best we could. This is gonna get poured solid with concrete anyway, but we just wanna make sure that these stay in place. So what we've been doing also at night is we've been covering this with plastic. We're getting to the point where we, it's starting to freeze a little bit up here. 
and it makes me worried that um, water will get in our cores and freeze inside and blow it out. So we've been covering at night um, just to keep everything, all the water out of here until we get this bond beam down um, and then we're good to go. Um, kind of like the front is up here. I'm um, not too worried about it. Uh, there is a little bit of a uh, place where water can get in, but not really crazy. Um, so I'm not too worried about it. So until we get to that point, we're going to be covering probably from here on out on every course that we do. So um, we'll show you how we lay that um, grout stop down when we mud. Um, we're going to finish this little section up and then we can start our bond beam course. So what we got here is we got our grout stop. Um, this is how much we've been trimming off. Um, like I said, about an inch, maybe inch and a half. So we're gonna lay this down here on top of our course. We don't want it to penetrate down through this one. And um, we put it down on our corner one here already. So we're just gonna butt up to it here. And then we're just gonna come back to this one web here um, because we wanna fill this core we're gonna stop right here. Now we're keeping it in probably about oh, half inch from either side. And all we're gonna to do to keep this in place is just uh, trowel some mud down here and this is gonna be set to go. All right, so there you go. Um, it's not gonna be perfect. Um, you might need to hold it down a little bit as you go to kind of keep it in place um, as you trowel down. But this is the way it looks, um, and we're just going to keep going like this. Make sure that you leave these cores all the way open, because that cement needs to go all the way down through. All right, so we have our block here. This is our bond beam block. You can see that there's perforations in here. Um, so we're just going to set this up with the perforations up. So here is our first block. You can see that it has the perforations in it here to knock out for our rebar. For these um, corner ones, we're gonna have to cut these, obviously, with the saw. Um, but we're just gonna keep working our way down. Now this course, um, for this section right here, is extremely important that it's perfectly level because this is what our wall will be sitting on for this section. And then it'll get built up from here. So for this part right here, this gets a sill plate, so we want to make sure that this is going to be perfectly flat. Alright guys, so this is the second day. We already put in our rebar and knocked out for our bond beam. Right now we are mixing um, and they're working over there doing that. Um, I wanna show you what we did with our rebar here real quick. So our rebar is sitting down in here. We have it overlapped almost probably two feet um, in most sections. And then we have it solid going around our turn. So right now what we're doing is we are filling all of these vertical cores um, that way they are filled. We'll come back and do the top part of our bond beam. Um, so that's what everyone's working on over here. So what we got is we got this little funnel that we are using to help us keep everything down in. Um, it just helps us to get it centered down into that core. Um, so we're filling these. Uh, they go down probably about to we filled up to here so all the way up and through here is hollow uh, with the rebar so we're filling that up right now um, and then we'll come back like i said and then just fill this whole thing in so we knocked everything out we filled it up to about here um, and then we're just going to come back through and fill it in with all the other grout so we're vibing this down in um, that way it settles down into our pockets with our rebar um, so that's what we're doing right now. Uh, we'll tune you back in once we get a little bit further. 
All right, so what you can see here is my wife and my mom are filling in that top bond beam, and my dad is going along through and smoothing out the top uh, and also vibing that concrete down in. So that's really important. We want the rebar in there to be fully encased uh, with the concrete. Um, so the vibe is kind of a, a must for that. It really gets it knit in there really well. Um, he's smoothing it out. Now, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it just has to be not lumpy or anything, especially where the block portion of it is because when we come back to set our new course, uh, we don't want anything messing up with that at all. So um, that's pretty much it for this as we knock those portions out, we set the rebar in, and then just filled it in. So that's all a bond beam is. However, doing this with the vertical uh, rebar makes this building incredibly strong. So that's the importance of bond beams. All right, so we just got our block sealed up. Um, I'll show you guys here what we got. We had two more bolts uh, right here, and this is going to be where a portion of the wall sits. So we needed to have our anchor bolts in here. Um, we only have eight inch ones. They go down to about right here on the wall. Um, we couldn't use the 10 inch ones because it would go past here with our uh, mesh that we have in. So we used eight inch ones. Uh, we have two right here. And then right here at this joint, we are going to go up um, another three courses, I believe. So this is what our bond beam looks like when it's all finished. Um, we just took a wet two by four, you can take a float, whatever you got, and then just kind of smooth this out over. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but you definitely don't want any um, raises on your, um, where you're gonna be setting your next course. Other than that, this doesn't have to be super smooth or anything crazy like that. Um, it's just gotta be filled in. Um, what we did do is we filled our, um, filled all of our verticals. So we filled all of these right here, um, these cores right here, all of these rebars down through here, we filled with um, a coarser stone. We used clean twos to add to our mix. Um, we didn't use sackcrete this time like we did the bottom. Um, I don't know what it was, but that sackcrete was awful to use. There was barely any cream in it, so what we did is we mixed our own. Um, we just used Portland cement, sand, and stone. That was it. Um, that works so much better. It seems to be a lot creamier. So we did use a larger stone. We had that staged up here in the front. Um, we used clean twos, sand. In that and then for when we actually filled in um, for our bond beam we used um, a bucket of one A's or excuse me one B's they're clean ones um, and a half bucket of the twos because we have so many of them um, we mixed that and so the mix was for our bond beam it was one bucket of one B's a half bucket of two B's, one bucket of sand, and a half bucket of Portland cement. So that was the mix. Um, those are the ratios that we did that we could put in and fit into our mixer. So up here we had everything staged. So we had our clean twos over here, our one, um, one B's over here, and then with our mixer here, and our sand's down here with our uh, mortar and stuff like that. So that's over there, but uh, that's it guys um, We're done with this side. Uh, we did have a vent over here You can see right here. Uh, where are you at right there? There's a vent um, That just got poured solid um, in through the bond beam. So other than that um, we tried to make this as level as we could with um, Because we're going to be putting down a sill plate on this. So we definitely want that we paid a little bit more attention to our detail, made sure that was nice and smooth, um, went over it twice. Um, we will be putting a sill gasket on there to fill in any imperfections, but we want it as close as possible. We don't want that board um, to bow and wave and stuff like that. So um, on this side right here, again, is our joint where we're gonna come up another three courses and then step it back. Um, Cause as you can see here, we have our dirt on either side. Um, 
So that's just why we had to step everything back. It was just easier than building it fully up. I'm definitely glad we didn't do that. I'm kind of can't wait until we get on to the um, framing stage because it's going to hopefully go a lot quicker than what this is going. This has taken us a really long time to do. So that's it for this, guys. That's our bond beam. We're going to start back at it. Um, we probably won't film um, coming up to our third course. Uh, we might film uh, stepping, <clears throat> excuse me, stepping that back. We are going to have to put grout um, on our third step back just for where we have our wall um, from right here. Um, but other than that, we aren't doing a bond beam until the very top. Uh, we have, um, what do we have, six more courses to go. Um, we could have done a bond beam in between there. I chose not to. We're just going to do the top one. These bottom ones um, is the thing that I was most worried about. Right back here is where we had all of that water accumulating and stuff. So um, we're going to do some special stuff on the outside to deal with that. But um, all of our push and heave is from down here at the bottom of most of our earth and stuff. So that's why we chose to skip all the way up to the top to do our next bond beam. So that'll be the next thing that we show you guys. So I'll see you a little later. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and hopefully uh, see you next time, guys.